Thank you for taking the time out, you know, a few minutes to just learn uh, about the human body and how it functions. Women in our events, like, what do you think about the pure vegan? What do you think about the pure um, ketogenic diet? What's, what's for me? You know, there's no perfect diet. It actually depends on your metabolism, your body type, your, your activity. Because um, there are uh, weight gain or overweight individuals that, that are very active. And uh, it has nothing to do with whether they exercise or not. Mm -hmm. But it's actually their metabolism or there's a problem in their endocrine, their, their hormones. So there's a lot of stuff to consider. Also, I want to mention that uh, we don't want to glorify this body, this physical body that uh, we want to we wanna take care of it because the Bible says that um, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? It is not your own. It belongs to the Lord. Therefore, honor God uh, with your body. So I want to focus our mind with regards to our goal that when we talk about taking care of our body, we don't have the intention to make this body an, an idol and attract people to how we look, how great our body is, but how this body can uh, make God look good because that's that's mm -hmm. the, the primary purpose of taking care of our body, to give glory back to Him, okay? Yep. And so uh, I want to discuss today about the microbiome. I don't know if you have heard of this, but there's a great uh, various uh, research about the bacteria in our, specifically in our intestines. So microbiome means it's a community of microorganism. It contains bacteria, it contains the virus, and uh, fungi. We have a, a microbiome in our mouth, in our skin, in our throat, in our reproductive organs, but mainly they reside in the intestinal tract mainly in the colon or the large intestines and they have a lot of function i would say that our relationship with them is uh, mutual meaning to say that they benefit from us the host and we benefit um, from them as well i'll cite you an example uh, when when we eat fiber for example um, we don't really have a capacity to digest all of the fiber that we get from legumes, from nuts, from seeds. And this microbiome, this bacteria, they secrete enzymes that has the capacity to digest those food that human beings don't have the capacity to do. And they convert the fiber in our diet into, we call it, short-chain fatty acids, okay? What are the examples of short-chain fatty acids? It could be um, acetic acid. And acetic acid is beneficial to human beings because our muscles use it for energy. One thing is uh, propionic acid, for example. And the propionic acid is used by the liver to um, produce adenosine triphosphate. Remember, we've been mentioning this over and over again that ATP is like, um, it, it's the energy that makes the world go round. It also produces um, lactic acid and also butyric acid. So that's one of the benefits of the healthy bacteria in our body. And uh, number two is, it is considered actually as part of the immune system. I love what Dr. Susan said that when there is disease, trust us, there is inflammation going on. I don't care if it's multiple sclerosis, autoimmune disease, osteoarthritis, heart attack, stroke, every disease is always tied to most of them, inflammation. And the microbiome, this um, bacteria, the good but healthy bacteria in our stomach, in our intestines, protect us from inflammation. How? Um, again, they produce um, chemicals called cytokines that somehow um, enables our immune system to produce anti-inflammatory cells. That's number one. Another thing is at the lining of our intestines, we call it the mucosa, we have the so-called immunoglobulin A. Its function is to just kill viruses and you know like bacteria right there in the intestinal tract you know once we eat food that are contaminated by all these microorganisms we have the IgG A that combats that um, infection and uh, the microbiome or the good bacteria enables our IgA to kill all those uh, we call it the bad guys the bad um, bacteria 
Number two is it's a direct. It's like a fortress. The microbiome or our or our healthy bacteria in our intestines, the one that protects us, they kind of like develop in the first two years of life. It helps in the establishment mm -hmm. of this barrier, the intestinal mucosa, so that if ever there's any bacteria in our tummy, it doesn't go into our blood. So that's another function of the bacteria in our stomach, the good bacteria. We call it the healthy gut flora. Another thing is it helps in the synthesis of vitamin K. You know that vitamin K is, you know, we, we rarely hear it, but it's very important in preventing uh, bleeding. That's why in babies, you know, in newborn babies, we inject uh, vitamin K right after birth because their flora is sterile. They don't have this established um, bacteria in their intestines that's, that uh, synthesizes vitamin K. That's why they need the synthetic intramuscular vitamin K. Um, so that they won't bleed after birth. And even um, the mode of delivery affects the diversity of our uh, microbial flora inside our stump, in, inside our intestines. Research have found that those that are delivered vaginally, they establish um, the, the normal flora better than those um, delivered via cesarean section because the baby is exposed to the vaginal bacteria from, from the birth um, canal. So what can we do? This is the question now. What affects the diversity of the microbial flora? Like, How do we maintain so that we have this healthy balance of um, bacteria, the good bacteria in our intestinal tract, so that we want to make sure that, you know, the bad guys doesn't uh, affect us or it doesn't uh, cause any diarrhea or any infection. Number one is, um, of course, um, avoidance as much as possible. We want to avoid antibiotics. Um, broad spectrum antibiotics can actually destroy those good bacteria. And so, if you have heard of the infection um, C. diff or Clostridium difficile, that's uh, an infection that causes diarrhea. The diarrhea, the stool is really foul smelling. Um, the stool has uh, either mucus or there's blood in the stools. And uh, it's, it's very contagious. The spore of that bacteria, if passed to another human being, can stay in, in the house, in the sofa, in the chair for six months because they're dormant. They're able to, mm. to, to create this spore that uh, resists you know, d destruction. Um, another thing is diet affects the, the, the kind of bacteria that grows in our intestines. Like say, Low fiber, um, low fiber and high fat diet. That's the standard American diet that we get in your fries. Burgers, um, shakes, uh, velvety cakes, um, cookies, all this delicious sugary food. They actually starve or kill the, the good bacteria, the healthy flora of our um, intestinal tract. And so what does it mean? Okay, it's a cascade effect. If you kill the bacteria or you starve off those bacteria, then now you are prone to inflammation. That's number one, because remember we said that um, this bacteria has uh, facilitates anti-inflammatory reaction. Number two, we uh, put the intestinal, the barrier at risk. It, we call it the leaky gut syndrome. We invite bacteria or, or big proteins to trigger uh, allergic reaction. That's why uh, if you have heard of people that uh, you, they, they, they say, oh, I'm gonna be a gluten-free uh, diet from now on because um, gluten, gluten containing food like like wheat bread, for example, contains the protein gliadin. There are big proteins that once they enter the leaky gut of our intestinal, intestinal tract because of the depletion of those healthy bacteria, then they trigger a reaction. They actually destroy the mucosa uh, or the lining of our intestines so that normally if your villa is like this, the finger-like material like my fingers, they become blunted, they become, um, they destroy the villi so that um, the absorptive capacity of our intestinal tract for proteins are also destroyed or um, weakened. Uh, one thing that we can do then is uh, choose our food. I love it when the Word of God said that everything is permissible. I love God because He has given us the choice and the freedom. It's not like you're going to hell because you ate ice cream or you ate M&M and all this 
amazing food. It's not that. Uh, God is saying that, you know, you can eat whatever you like, you know. Even in the Bible, it says that uh, Peter has the vision of a blanket with all the kinds of animals the Israelites are allowed to eat. But, but it also says, but not everything is beneficial. It's like at the end of the day, we should really use wisdom on what will uh, honor or benefit this temple that God has given us. So I would say eat food that are rich in fiber like whole grain, ligands, um, seeds, uh, fresh fruit, and uh, vegetables. Also the manner of cooking. If we eat fresh vegetables, that's even better because the fibers are not destroyed. Or sauteed, you know, light, lightly sauteed or steamed is better. Also, uh, the intake of probiotics. Um, you can eat fermented food like uh, kimchi, um, cabbage, um, sauerkraut, and also your yogurt. You can, it has lots of live bacteria like your lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. But be careful though, there are um, yogurt that are really rich in sugar. Be careful that you, know, you don't overload yourself with sugar and make sure that it has at least 150 colony forming units of the live uh, bacteria. Also, it affects our mood every time that the diversity of the bacteria in our uh, intestines um, is disrupted or, or less. It also affects our brain. We call it the microbiome, the gut-brain axis connection. It, uh, it affects how we, we react to stress. It affects our mood, our sleeping pattern. So if you cannot sleep at night or you're frequently waking up in the morning, um, make an inventory of all the intake of food that you've done in the last three days. Because maybe you're not really depressed, like mentally, you know, like something is going on with your brain. Maybe it has something to do with the food that you, you ate and now it's just affecting your emotion. So um, I hope this helps that now um, we don't have to be in bandage or forever be affected by the kind of bacteria that lives in our intestines because we have the power. We have the, the choice to... To create a healthy balance by eating food that is rich in fiber, low in fat, take your probiotics. If you, I'm not saying really gluten-free, it really depends on you. I have friends that are allergic to eating all the food that contains gluten. If you think you're one of those, then it's your decision. Avoid it, even dairy products. They're very inflammatory. If you think like you're prone to inflammation, then by all costs, um, avoid those diets. So thank you guys. We love you. Thank you for joining us. I hope that this has somehow empowered you to, to make the right choice and maintain this um, healthy bacteria in your intestines that's very crucial to our health, affect our brain, the inflammation in our system. Thank you guys. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.